Hey everyone, it's DC here and uh, today I've got another episode of Cybersecurity q and um, I'm filming at home for once, which is really nice. I've got my mic, I've got the proper camera set up and everything, and I've got a laptop in front of me, which is, it's so much easier than recording in the back of a van or out in a park somewhere. But anyway, I wanted to make today's episode uh, from a, a pretty long question from one of the viewers. Uh, his name is Elliot Tate, and he has a really good question, and it, it pretty much warrants its own uh, episode because I can talk about it for a while. So the question is, okay, I have two questions. Firstly, do you get worn out by being the outsider of some of these contracts? For example, I can imagine in-house sysadmins or developers getting annoyed that you've come in and told them that they need to secure their environment. Secondly, have you had many chances of working overseas or have you had or have many of your colleagues? I'm trying to upskill myself enough that I would be attractive enough to overseas firms to hire me for contracting or consulting. Thank you for taking the time to answer the questions. I appreciate it. So, the I'll answer the um, the second question first, which is, uh, where is it? Have you had many chances of working overseas or have many of your colleagues? Uh, I, I work for myself, so I contract out myself to government agencies so I don't actually have any colleagues apart from the other directors of the company uh, who are, I don't see them that often they they do their own thing I'm the only cybersecurity professional in in the group um, yes I have worked overseas uh, for one private firm and for two different governments and um, yeah it look it's it's not impossible to to work overseas and it's not that hard to get into the market as well as long as you have the certifications that I've, I've gone over before um, or if you at least have some experience in in these areas uh, so you're trying to upskill yourself to be attractive enough yeah that's that's pretty much the way to do it if you really want to work overseas I'd probably go for experience over qualifications because that's what most people look for they want someone with hands-on experience so that that sort of answers that question um, but yeah, I, I don't my I don't have any colleagues to compare to because I don't have any. So back to the other question: Do you get worn out by being the outsider of some of these contracts? Um, sometimes you have to just sort of get past it though, and yeah, you get a fair bit of hostility from pretty much every department, um, especially the other IT guys, because at the end of the day, you're securing the entire business, not just the IT systems. Um, so there's, yeah, you can't, you do piss some people off, but, um, yeah, you, you do get sort of shunted a fair bit. It's not a very welcoming job, uh, especially because basically you're going in there, you're telling them how to do their job better. And a lot of these places, especially governments, uh, in Australia anyway, they, the, the guys there have been working there for 10 plus years. Like they've, they've been there for a while. And um, that which is both a good thing they know that system in and out however they also get a little bit lazy sometimes and from being stuck in the same systems for so long they haven't learned uh, too much new technology or like some people there's there's some places that had never heard of next-gen firewalls at all and these are huge government agencies like massive thousands of employees that's that's big for Australia um, so yeah it's it is what it is but um, the other problem is they know most of them they're, they're pretty friendly with their bosses and they know roughly how much you're getting paid and compared to a salary like a very cushy government salary it's it's a lot more uh, like I mean like what I would get paid compared to a government employee so for example a, uh, a sysadmin in the government would get somewhere between 60 and 80 thousand dollars Australian a year um, 
whereas a contracted cybersecurity person is probably going to make that in six months. Um, so it's yeah, it they get pretty pissed off a lot of the time. They're like, "Oh, this guy doesn't know what they're doing," and and you have to argue your point, and um, you really have to prove yourself. So you have to and my only advice here is to not uh, give yourself over to um, the the bullying that probably will come and always keep your guard up for what you're working on. So make sure you have proof of everything. Everything has to be in writing. And um, yeah, just, just keep yourself safe because if there's an opportunity where they can prove you wrong, they will take it. And sometimes it's like the, the most ridiculous stuff like um they i don't know that just like random stuff like they'll ask you about some very particular system that they're using in the business and it's like your second day there and you're like uh i'm i'm not entirely sure i haven't gone through it yet they will pick on that for, <laughs> for a while and it's it's just ridiculous because it's like i don't care how this program is used to be honest i'm i'm just here to make sure that it's it's secure and that you're not letting any other unwanted traffic in th- through whatever protocols this program's using something like that and it's yeah they they just don't get it but that's that's fine that's a, that's just nature of the job really so yeah so i i guess that's pretty much it i just wanted to go over that that one question uh, cuz it was a really it was a good one and I don't know if I've been asked that before, um, and I don't know if anyone actually cares, but uh, yeah, I thought I'd answer that one, so thanks, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to throw some comments down in uh, in the video, and I'll make sure I answer as many of those questions, if not all of them, in the next video. Thanks, guys.